Hello, and welcome to another episode of Movie Spoiler Alerts. Today we're talking about the 2010 fantasy adventure film, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, the seventh Harry Potter film. So let's get started. The spoiler does require in part that you've seen the previous films. If you need to see a spoiler for them, check out the link in the cards above. The film opens with Voldemort gaining strength after Dumbledore's death, killing muggles and infiltrating the Ministry. Harry, Ron, and Hermione pursue destroying Voldemort's horcruxes to leave him vulnerable to be killed. Harry's protection spell breaks on his birthday and has to leave his childhood home. The Order of Phoenix leaves with him, using polyjuice potions to make decoy Harry's. The convoy, however, is attacked, but they escape to Ron's home. However, Mad-Eye Moody and Harry's Owl Hedwig are both killed. Harry has a vision of the wand maker Ollivander being tortured by Voldemort for information on a mystical wand. The next day, the Minister of Magic arrives to reuse Dumbledore's will and presents them with a Deluminator, a book called The Tales of Beetle the Bard, and Harry's first golden snitch that he ever caught. The Minister also states that Harry is to be given the sword of Godric Gryffindor. However, he states that it wasn't Dumbledore's to give, and also the sword is missing. The minister is later killed by Death Eaters and replaced by a new puppet minister. Muggle-born witches and wizards are arrested, and rather racist and totalitarian laws are put into place. Death Eaters attack at a wedding at the Weasley house, but they are warned ahead of time. The gang travel to Sirius Black's house and discover that the fake Horcrux locket found at the end of the sixth film was actually from Sirius's brother. They find out that a shady member of the Order of the Phoenix named Mundungus stole the real Horcrux locket. Mundungus is captured by two house elves, and he reveals that the locket was taken by Dolores Umbridge, the former professor seen in the fifth film. Using polyjuice potions, they break into the Ministry and are able to steal the locket back from Umbridge. They hide out in the woods and try to destroy the Horcrux, but have a lot of difficulty. The locket curses whoever wears it to become angry, depressed, and paranoid, almost like the ring from Lord of the Ring, so they try to take turns wearing the locket. Ron becomes particularly upset after wearing the locket, and leaves Hermione and Harry. Hermione decides that because it is coated in basilisk blood, the sword of Godric Gryffindor would be able to destroy the Horcrux, which is why Dumbledore wanted them to have it. They then travel to the house where Harry's parents died, and encounter a woman that they believe has the sword. However, this is a trap, and it is actually Voldemort's pet snake Nagini in disguise, who attacks them, and they flee. Harry is also continually having visions of Voldemort, who is interrogating a wand maker named Gregorovich, who claims to have had a mystical wand that was stolen by a young teenage boy, who is actually the infamous wizard Gilbert Grindelwald, the same wizard seen at the end of the Fantastic Beasts film. Voldemort eventually interrogates Grindelwald about the wand's location, and then he is killed by Voldemort. Harry is led by a Patronus of a Doe, which leads him to the Sword of Gryffindor to be found under a frozen pond. Harry tries to jump in and get it, but the locket that he is wearing tries to strangle him, but he is saved by Ron. Harry uses his parcel tongue ability, or snake talking, to open the locket, revealing tormenting images, but Ron is able to destroy the locket. Hermione and Ron reconcile, and they travel to see Xenophilus Lovegood, the father of Luna Lovegood, to understand the symbol hidden in the book given by Dumbledore. Lovegood tells the story of the Deathly Hallows, a story of three brothers given powerful magical items, which when combined would make one the master of death. The three items include the Invisibility Cloak, a stone that would bring back dead loved ones, and an all-powerful wand called the Elder Wand. Death Eaters arrive, however, and the group flees, but a group of Death Eaters and Snatchers eventually find them. Hermione uses a spell to disguise Harry's features before they are captured, and they are brought to the Malfoy Manor. Bellatrix Lestrange locks up Harry and Ron, along with Luna, the Wandmaker Ollivander, and a goblin named Griphook. Bellatrix tortures Hermione, trying to find out how they got the Sword of Gryffindor, because she had the sword locked in her vault in Gringotts. Harry is able to contact help, and Dobby appears to save them, and a battle ensues. Harry disarms Draco, and they all disapparate right as Bellatrix throws a knife. They arrive at a beach to find out that Dobby has been killed by the blade. In the final scene of the film, we see that Voldemort has discovered the Elder Wand's location, and opens Dumbledore's tomb to claim the powerful wand for himself. So that was the spoilers for Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1. If you have another film you'd like to see me spoil, please let me know in the comments below. 
Check out movie spoiler alerts on the various forms of social media, and remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.